Today I will share my experiences using the Arco Coffee Grinder from Goat Story these past few weeks. First a little overview and then I'll give you some good old pros and cons using the Commandante as benchmark. Here we have the Arco 2-in-1 Coffee Grinder. It is 2-in-1 because it works both as a single dose electric grinder and also as a manual coffee grinder. Starting with the pros, I think this grinder looks quite good. That is of course very subjective, but I think the Arco grinder with its clean, minimalistic and compact look is very successful in that department. Here it is next to the Commandante. Another area in which I think it excels is build quality. The main aluminium body makes it feel sturdy, weighing in at a little more than 2.8 kilograms. Most of its features also feel great to use. For example, the on-off switch on top, the lever to open the hopper, the ring to adjust grind size, and especially the magnetic coffee catcher is a nice touch. Finally, conversion from manual to electric and vice versa is very simple, with just a twist lock and two lines to line up. It would be nice to have some sort of tactile feedback instead, but it does work just fine. Then we have the adjustability of different grind settings, which is definitely one of the Arco's highlights. It happens on this very intuitive outer adjustment ring that is advertised to give over 240 different grind settings, from espresso to French press. It also has 60 clicks per rotation of the dial, and has a very smart method on the dosing cup of showing which rotation you are on. With my coffees, I've never needed to go above 120 clicks, so maybe the range is a bit overstated, but it is nice to be able to make very small changes in grind size. To contrast, we have the Commandanda's rather modest range of around 32 clicks, although I've never felt the need for more adjustability with the Commandanda when brewing pour over. Now to speed, in which the Arco really leaves the Commandante in the dust. As a hand grinder, the Arco grinds incredibly fast and smoothly in nearly its full range of grind settings. Even grinding these lightly roasted Kenyan beans at fine grind settings was no problem for the Arco. When turned into a 360 revolutions per minute electric grinder, it is also very fast, although I suspect some popcorning inside the chamber slows it down a little. On screen are the results of a quick test I did comparing it to the Commandante. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, how does the coffee it produces taste? Now this is purely from a pour over perspective, as I don't do espresso, and I can say that the Arco's 32mm birds actually produce quite tasty coffee. It is generally sweet and uniform and has a nice tactility, especially at the finer grind settings. On screen is the grind size distribution at a few different settings. In blind cuppings and brews, comparing it with the Commandante, I out of three prefer the Commandante all three times. The cups that the Commandante produced were just cleaner and more complex than the Arco grinder, especially at coarser settings where the Arco becomes a bit muddled. Now all these tests were done using the Arco in electric mode. And interestingly, the cups coming from the Arco when using it manually were much different. Which leads me to the first con of this grinder, which is the fact that the grind size distribution, as in how many big and small coffee particles it produces, varies quite a bit when switching from electric to manual. Now this is a problem, as it means you can't just switch from electric to manual, as the cups will be different. I think this difference in distribution is owing to the high revolutions per minute when it is powered by the motor. This causes more fines and therefore a sweeter and more full-bodied but also slightly more astringent cup of coffee. When using it manually I get a cleaner cup but with the sacrifice of some of the sweetness and structure. Now onto the biggest downside for me which is the grinder overheating when using the motor. This means that you, in my experience, can't grind more than two big doses of coffee, as the grinder begins to smell of warmed rubber. You actually have to let the grinder cool for about 20 minutes before using it again, which makes dialing in a mess. My first thought would just be to switch to manual, but since the grind distribution changes, you really can't do this. And this nearly renders the great adjustability of the Arco useless, if you don't have a couple of hours in the morning to dial in your coffee. Finally, they claim near zero electric grinder retention, which I definitely can't agree on. 
unless you bang the grinder into the table to knock off ground, which I wouldn't recommend, or your near zero definition is rounding to the nearest whole number. When grinding a 13 gram dose of finely ground coffee, I usually get 0.3 to 0.4 grams of retention. With the Commandante, I consistently get 0.1 gram of retention. You can use the rush drop the technique to bring this down to 0.1 grams, but that is a bit of a hassle. And when grinding 20 grams of coffee at an espresso setting, I get 0.5 grams retention, compared to the Commandante's 0.2 grams. Getting stuck coffee out is also very inconvenient, due to the design making the coffee very hard to reach without a good brush. So should you buy this grinder? I have listed all the pros and cons on the screen and in the description for you to easily decide. Another important factor here is price, and the Arco is priced at 480 euros, compared to the Commandante's 245 euros. Make of that what you will. For me, the cons definitely outweigh the pros, and for my specific needs, I would go with the Commandante. On a final note, this unit was borrowed from a friend, so Arco has not sent this over to me. I know they have been rather terrible in hitting their targets, but according to their website, they have now begun shipping out units. That was all for today, thank you very much for watching.